The Optiver Online Assessment is one of the longest and most demanding tests of its type in the world of trading. It lasts almost three hours and consists of five very different tests. In this video, I'm going to walk you through all parts of the assessment, share some valuable insight tips, and show some examples. If you want more information, sample questions, and preparation resources, please check out the link in the description for my full Optiver test guide. The first test, named 188, is probably the most well-known test in this collection. That's because it is one of the most common screening tools in the world of trading. Designed to measure your numerical abilities, it is a quick math test with 80 basic math drills. You have 8 minutes to answer as many questions as possible. And as if the test isn't challenging enough, if you get an answer wrong, not only do you not gain any points, you lose points. Since you can't skip questions or leave them blank, take extra care and do your best to refrain from guessing. The number logic test deals with number sequences. You've probably seen these before. Find the pattern, find the next number in the sequence. The test contains 26 questions and you have 25 minutes to answer as many of them as possible. Like the 188 test, you gain one point for a correct answer and lose one point for an incorrect one. However, here you can move between questions and also skip them. If you choose to skip a question, you get no points. So, in this test, time management skills will come in far handier. The next test, Zap N, is the longest one on the list. It will take about 90 minutes to complete. That's because it is not a single test, but rather a set of 9 gamified mini tests evaluating your cognitive abilities and personality traits. While these tests are mostly simple and straightforward, quite a few of them are actually psychological tests intended to measure your behavior. So when you're asked to inflate a balloon or build a tower, there's usually much more than that going on behind the scenes. Now to keep this video short, I will do my best to maintain those descriptions quite brief, without going into too much detail. Again, if you want more information, please check out the link in the description. In the balloon game, you need to pump balloons to earn money. At any point, you may cash in the money you've earned to move on to the next balloon. However, the balloon pops after a random number of pumps, and if it did, you lose all the money you earned for that round. In the second session of the game, the rules are similar, but with two differences. One, the money you earn with every pump is doubled, and two, if the balloon pops, you will be fined with half of what you've earned. This innocent-looking game of inflating balloons is actually a well-known psychological test known as the Balloon Analog Risk Task, or BART. As the name suggests, this test is designed to measure your risk-taking tendencies. Whether you should be a low-risk taker or a high-risk taker kind of depends on the job you want, but in any case, this is something you should consider when planning, preparing, and playing the game. If you want to dive deeper into this, I link a video about the relationship between risk-taking and trading performance in the description. The Skyscraper game is another well-known psychological and cognitive game known as the Tower of London. You will be required to create three towers to match an example, in the least time and number of moves. What the game instructions intentionally fail to mention is that this is also a test of your tendency to plan ahead, so your preparation time before and during the game will also be taken into account when calculating your score. Now to something simpler. The shapeshift test is designed to measure your attention and focus. It presents you with one of two shapes, a circle and a square. If you see the circle, press the right arrow key. If you see the square, press the left one. Code Compare is a rather simple data checking test. It presents you with a sequence of numbers and letters followed by four similar sequences. Spot the identical sequence as fast as you can. Pin Code is a purely cognitive game designed to measure your short-term memory. You will need to memorize and type in sequences of numbers that become increasingly longer. There are three rounds to the game, each of which has more challenging instructions as to how you should type in the sequence. Number Box is another cognitive game that measures mathematical skill. It is based on the famous 24 game where you manipulate four integers so that the result is the number in the middle. After we spend some time with a couple of quick games, we're back to something heavier with Figure It Out. In this game, you need to find the properties of a hidden figure, like shape, color, 
pattern, etc. This is done using the feedback you get about correct and incorrect properties. The lower your number of guesses, the higher your score is going to be. The switch is another simple game designed to measure attention. Throughout the game, the blocks will constantly alternate. If the top block is highlighted, you need to indicate whether the result of the math drill is odd. If the bottom block is highlighted, you need to indicate whether the sets of arrows are identical. The last game, Stockmaster, presents you with a set of quickly shifting indicators. Click on an indicator when the needle is in the colored area. The indicators are constantly appearing and disappearing, and their speed greatly varies. Okay, that was exhausting to even read. A quick breather before we move on to the next test. The next test is called Beat the Odds. Here you need to face 20 questions about probability theory with 90 seconds per question. The rules are similar to those on the number logic test. 1 point for a correct answer, minus 1 point for a wrong one, 0 points for a skipped question. Now, before moving on to the fifth and last test on the list, I want to spend a moment talking about preparation. If you are interested in preparing for the Optiver assessment, there is currently only one preparation resource which I can recommend, and that is Job Test Prep. Full disclosure, I am an affiliate. While there are a couple of good prep resources for the 188 or the number logic tests, Job Test Prep is the only online resource to offer actual gamified practice tests for the Zap N. Again, that may change in the future, so I will keep my webpage up to date. However, Job Test Prep does not offer any preparation for the Beats the Odds section, which I think is kind of unfortunate. But worry not, I've made a tailored prep for you, which you can get for absolutely free if you purchase the JTP preparation through one of my affiliate links. You can find them on my website or in the description down below. Just send me the confirmation you received from JTP and I will send you an access link to the Beats the Odd preparation at no cost to you. The fifth and last test is ZAPQ, a personality profiling questionnaire measuring 24 different traits through 150 questions. This section is untimed. The main challenge here is the fact that you have to choose between two statements, even if you agree or disagree with both. This is a common technique in personality profiling tests known as forced choice. This allows the test to rank your traits, but also to prevent you from trying to game the system through dishonest answers. That's it, we're finally done. All five sections of the Optiver assessment covered. Again, if you want more information, feel free to check out my Optiver assessment full guide. All links mentioned in this video can be found in the description. And if you enjoy the content, please consider sharing and subscribing. I know that test-related content isn't really what you'd normally subscribe to, but it does really help me in keep creating this content for you and other candidates like you. So thanks for watching, good luck, and see you next time.